Hi, I'm Peter Strymer, priest associated at Epiphany Parish, and I'll be returning this summer to take up my teaching ministry. But in the meantime, our rector, Doi Khan, has offered me the opportunity through our YouTube channel to offer some short teachings on the Book of Common Prayer. It was the French philosopher Pascal who said, all of humanity's problems derive from our inability to sit in a room quietly alone. These past weeks have given us that opportunity, and our Book of Common Prayer is an encyclopedia of resources of how to use this time sitting quietly alone to offer our prayers on our own behalf, on our church's behalf, on our community's behalf. The Book of Common Prayer was first written in 1549 as part of the English Reformation. On the continent, Luther and Zwingli and a number of others had turned the church upside down. Two basic principles of the Reformation were that people should be able to read the scriptures in their own language and to worship God in their own tongue. And so the 1549 prayer book and its 1552 revision were the very first time that people could officially worship God using their own language. Now, it's sort of ironic that that language of that original prayer book, that Elizabethan cadence, that flowery imagery that's so beloved by so many of us, was in its own time an attempt to write in good, plain English. The Book of Common Prayer has had great influence throughout our culture. Anytime you go to a wedding, you'll hear the phrase, speak now or else forever hold your peace. If you go to a funeral, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Those are phrases that come to us from our prayer book. In English literature, you see the influence of the prayer book. Shakespeare was writing at the same time that the prayer book was evolving. Uh, Samuel Coleridge, John Bunyan, um, down to the Brontes, even down into modern times in T.S. Eliot, many, many English authors found inspiration in the Book of Common Prayer. Episcopalians today, who have the Eucharist as their primary form of worship, are not as familiar as we used to have been with the Office of Morning Prayer. For centuries in our country, this would have been the primary worship service, and Episcopalians would have known its prayers and its method for offering up to God the praise that God deserves. If you have a prayer book, you can find morning prayer on page 37 in the old language or on page 75 in contemporary language. And this is what I would like to recommend to you as a way to start your day in this time of self-isolation. I'm going to close this first teaching with one of my favorite prayers from that daily office, a collect for grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor become overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.